What are some of the signs that we are indeed living in a time when Bible prophecy is coming to life? When Jesus warned us about the coming of the Son of Man, he told us in Luke chapter 21, verse 25, there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. With this in mind, I want you to look at this article posted by the Washington Post. It reads, there's a total solar eclipse coming soon. A rare celestial event is mere months away. On April 8th, afternoon will morph into night for about four minutes from northern Mexico to New England. The air will suddenly become colder by around 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Birds and insects will fall silent in the darkness. Confused plants will ramp down their food production. Nocturnal animals, like owls and bats, will begin to stir. These are the signs of a total solar eclipse, when the moon temporarily blocks all sunlight on a swath of Earth. But this year's total eclipse is special, because we may not see another one in the United States for two more decades. Now, for just a moment, there can be two perspectives regarding this. There will be those interested in science who will say this is a great event, a once-in-a-lifetime spectacle. And then, the other perspective will be from those who study biblical prophecy, those who are reading the Bible and watching for the signs. And this group of people will look at this event and think, could this be a sign? Could this be a warning from God? One publication named Harbringers Daily wrote a piece that offers a biblical perspective into this event. And in an article titled 2024 X Solar Eclipse, Coincidence or Final Warning, they say the pattern of two solar eclipses forming an X over the US also happened in the early 1800s. The first solar eclipse occurred on June 16, 1806, with the second completing an X on September 17, 1811. The following quote comes from the New Madrid, Missouri website. The New Madrid earthquakes were the biggest earthquakes in American history. They occurred in the central Mississippi Valley, but they were felt as far away as New York City, Boston, Montreal, and Washington, D.C. President James Madison and his wife Dolly felt them in the White House. Church bells rang in Boston. From December 16, 1811 through March of 1812, there were over 2,000 earthquakes in the central Midwest, and between 6,000 to 10,000 earthquakes in the Boothville of Missouri, where New Madrid is located near the junction of Ohio and Mississippi rivers. In the known history of the world, no other earthquakes have lasted so long or produced so much evidence of damage as the New Madrid earthquakes. Three of the earthquakes are on the list of America's top earthquakes. The first one on December 16, 1811, a magnitude of 8.1 on the Richter scale. The second on January 23, 1812, at 7.8. And the third on February 7, 1812 at as much as 8.8 .8 magnitude. Could the upcoming completion of an X across the U.S. midsection by the April 8, 2024 eclipse point to another catastrophe in the months afterward? So, with all this in mind, as children of God, what do we do? What do we make of all this? How do we process all of this? Well. Once again, the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verse 25 to 27, and there will be strange signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And here on earth, the nations will be in turmoil, perplexed by the roaring seas and strange tides. People will be terrified at what they see coming upon the earth, for the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then. 
everyone will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. The Bible has given us all of this information so that we can be prepared, not fearful, not terrified, but prepared. Bible prophecy is a puzzle, a puzzle with many different pieces, and they are all clear to see in the Bible. And here are some of the pieces we need to watch out for. The rise of deception. We should be aware of the amount of false teaching and false prophets that have found their way onto various platforms around the world. Another piece of the puzzle is the rise of demonic doctrines, a gospel that tickles the ears of people. Then another piece is one we are all too familiar with, wars and rumors of wars. There is apostasy, which is the great falling away. Then there is the love of many growing cold. Then there are earthquakes, pestilences, and of course, supernatural signs in the sun, moon, and stars. When you put all of these pieces of the puzzle together, you begin to see that a picture is being formed. God's word has drawn a picture that tells us exactly what to expect as the second coming of Christ draws nearer. Now, the Word of God talks a lot about how people will change in the last days. And once again, a picture begins to emerge about what society will look like. Paul warned us that people will not endure sound doctrine. People will have itching ears and they will be attracted to doctrines of demons. There will be false prophets and false teachings emerging throughout the world. People will only love themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Now, I would like us to talk a bit more about the kinds of people you should be aware of in the last days. Because if the devil can plant someone into your inner circle, then he knows he has a good chance of influencing you to do the wrong thing. He knows that you're much more likely to be receptive when someone close to you is encouraging you to do the wrong thing. Even more so if that person is helping, assisting, or enabling you to do the wrong thing. And so the thing is, you need to be alert to the signs that someone in your life may be planted by the devil in order to get you to push or pull away from walking with the Lord. Now, the first sign you should look for is probably the most obvious, and that is a person who encourages you to do wrong. The devil will always plant people or a person who encourages and cheers you on. This is the type of person who encourages you to go to places that you know you have no business going to. This is the type of person that edges you on. Oh, there's nothing wrong with a little fun every once in a while, they'll say. Stop being so uptight. Stop being such a holy roller. One drink won't make you a sinner. This person is a dangerous person. They are a threat to your salvation. The Amplified Translation of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33 to 34 says, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Be sober-minded, be sensible, and wake up from your spiritual stupor. As you ought, and stop shining, for some of you have no knowledge of God, you are disgracefully ignorant of him and ignore his truths. I say this to your shame. How does bad company corrupt good morals, you ask? Well, they encourage you to do the wrong thing. They encourage you to sin. They try to get you to compromise your integrity. They are the sort of person who will tell you things like, it's okay once in a while. But be warned, this is the type of bad company that corrupts. They push and pull you to sin. And as children of God, 
Once we identify such people in our lives, we need to separate ourselves from them. Now, the second sign that someone in your life has been planted by the devil is if they try to control and manipulate you. Think of it this way. God, almighty in his wisdom, in his majesty and glory, he does not control you. He does not forcefully make you do anything. The Holy Spirit may convict you, but conviction in the heart and manipulation are two very different things. Now, when you find someone who attempts to control you, that person is being used of the devil. God has given you a free will. He has given you the ability and capability to make choices. And any time that someone else tries to take that away from you, any time that someone attempts to impose their will upon you, they are being used of the devil. If you look throughout the Bible, you will see that anyone who had this spirit of control was used by the devil. Jezebel had this controlling spirit. Nebuchadnezzar had this spirit. In fact, it was so strong in him that he built a golden statue of himself and demanded that everyone would bow down and worship it. And when three Hebrew boys by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused, he had cast them into a furnace. That is a wicked and controlling spirit. If you can identify this spirit in anyone within your inner circle, I encourage you to move away. Separate yourself. That's how you will be protected. The third sign that someone is sent by the devil is what I'd like to call the enabler. The enabler is really used by the enemy because this person goes beyond encouraging you to sin. They go beyond manipulating you to sin. They provide the resources for you to sin. The enabler will give the addict money to feed their habit. The enabler will invite the married man to an event with a single woman and help him lie to his wife that he'll be out of town for a few days because of work. If you're a person given to lust, the enabler will make it possible for you to act out that lust. The enabler will facilitate they will provide the resources and everything needed for you to do what you are not meant to do and be where you are not meant to be. The enabler is a dangerous person because they make it possible for you to sin. And Jesus gave a very stern and serious warning to those who enable others to sin. Here's what Mark chapter 9 verse 42 says. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe and trust in me to stumble, that is, to sin or lose faith, it would be better for him if a heavy millstone, one requiring a donkey's strength to turn it, were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Those are strong words to illustrate the severity of punishment that would follow if someone led others to sin. So be careful. Assess your inner circle. Is there anyone who enables you to sin? Because if there is, that's not the sort of person you should be around. Now, the final type of person you need to avoid is the discourager. The discourager is one who pulls you away from God. They make you question God. The discourager might not necessarily enable you to sin or encourage you to sin, but here's what they'll do. They'll talk you out of joining that Bible study group on Wednesday. They'll talk you out of attending that prayer meeting. They'll give you a thousand and one reasons why you should watch the game or attend this event. And they'll tell you how missing one service won't hurt you. This is the type of bad company you don't want around. The discourager will question your pastor. They present the case of how church is all about profit. They will highlight how church people treat you. Everything negative, they'll pick up on it. 
and so be aware. Be careful of this type of person. They will never tell you that there is no perfect church. They will never tell you that if you keep missing and neglecting your prayer life, then you will not progress as a Christian. You will be powerless as a Christian. So, overall, I pray that you will be vigilant against people who encourage you to sin, enable you to sin. Stay away from these types of people. Evil company corrupts good habits. Pray that God would expose every single individual that's been planted by the enemy in your life. But especially, pray that God would lead you to people who are strong in faith so that you can strengthen each other and encourage each other in the things of the Lord.